Shanghai is the thrilling story of a young man named Joe Musashi who must rescue the children of his ninja clan from the evil Zed organization. It is an action-packed thrill ride that is as exciting as it is challenging. Oh wait, that's Shinobi. Shanghai's just Mahjong. My bad. In case anybody is not familiar with how this kind of game works, uh, there's a pattern of tiles on the board that you must remove in pairs. 72 of them to be exact. 72? That sounds familiar. Oh, right. It's the alcohol by volume content of the booze that I needed to swill just to get through this. Yada yada, use of the Sega system only, whatever. I make no secret of the fact that I'm not a fan of this type of game. Um, this title screen is really cool. I like the dragons. I like the dudes that are playing a disappearing game of Mahjong. Um, again, if there's anybody in the world who doesn't know how this kind of game works, uh, the game gives you a little bit of a tutorial on how to play it before, the, before it starts. Um, basically, it builds up a pattern of tiles which you then have to remove, you know, matching pairs, until there are none left. Uh, you can only remove a tile if it's open, and by open that means there's nothing on top of it, and it's not touched on both the right and left side by another tile. So if it's open on the left or the right or both, and there's nothing on it, then you can move it. Um, tiles like the one that I highlighted there, it's a spring tile, those are seasons. Any two seasons can be matched with each other, and any two flowers can be matched with each other as well, just to make things a little more confusing. But if you need to, you can use this function to identify a tile, and it'll tell you what it is. For example, this is the second dot. That's a really weird name, and I have to imagine it's a bad translation of the traditional name for it. Um, that's the green dragon, though, which seems fairly straightforward. Another useful and thoughtful feature that the developers included is the ability to change the music so that you don't kill yourself. I didn't find any of the music included with the game particularly enjoyable after about 10 seconds, but the third one, Music C, was the most bearable for me. So that's what I played on for the most part here. Eventually though, I just turned it off. The reason you might want to turn the music off completely is that if you're determined to win, you will play for a long time. A very, very long time. Now there are other game modes. This challenge mode is actually two players. Um, the time limit that you select is how long each player has to complete a move, and you trade off back and forth. They didn't disappear there in time, so the second player got a crack at it. But since I didn't have a second controller uh, hooked up, I couldn't do anything. This might be fun if you're hanging out with a friend who is extremely boring to be around and doesn't mind being bored. Um... After recording the footage that you just saw, where the music was playing, uh, I thought that I had enough footage and stopped playing. But then I thought it would be nice to include footage of the ending screen when you finally win a game, which I have done in the past, once. However, after playing for between four and a half and five hours, I gave up. Partly because I was excruciatingly bored, partly because I was very tired, and partly because I ran out of absinthe. Even as far as a Shanghai Mahjong-style game goes, this doesn't have much to offer. There are only three annoying music tracks to choose from, and there is only one board layout. The tiles are in different locations each time you play, but there's only one actual pattern. Combine this with the problems inherent in any Shanghai Mahjong game, um, 
which is that there are so many hidden tiles that you can't see that the chances of removing them in the proper order the first time is extremely slim. Um, ugh, ugh. I mean, if you like this kind of game, you're probably a supercomputer, or you have the patience of a saint, and you're willing to go until there are no more possible moves, back up many, many moves and try a different fork until you finally get it right. I'm not like that, and I can't do it. So, I hate this game. I hate it. Thanks for listening to me bitch about a perfectly good puzzle game. I'll see you next time.